here we go. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the C Plus Podcast. This is the sixth episode, and this is a variety episode, a uh, variety, variety podcast that uh, I do with uh, my co-host Hex Kinko. That's Hex Kinko over there. My name is Shogun Shin, and uh, yeah, we've been doing this. This is six episodes already, man. That's crazy. Yep. Wild. S- number six. Um, so, uh, I, I didn't actually start until you clapped. Okay. I didn't start recording until you clapped, so that's fine. hopefully that's not going to be too much of an issue. Anyway. It should, uh, it should, it'll still sync up in the edit. I do okay, cool. the, I do the clap, uh, primarily for my sake, because of, since I'm ah. re, I'm re-recording my audio, I have to sync it up that way. Oh, so okay. It, just, it gives, gives me a point, so that way I can sync it, my audio specifically. Cool. Alrighty. Uh, so, how how is Animal Crossing going? Uh, you? it's going okay. Um, current, so, I had, like, three goals in Animal Crossing. One of them was, uh, to get, uh, like, the highest rank you could. Because, every, so, every week, uh, every Saturday, uh, there's basically, like, it's basically, like, the HOA but it's a better mm-hmm. version of the HOA that people don't hate. Uh, and it's okay. called the Happy Home Academy, so it's the HHA. Uh, okay. And every every su- yeah every Sunday, so every Saturday, they will rate your home, and they will like give you like a point value and a rank, and they'll like give you like tips on like how to make your house better, quote unquote. Okay. Uh, and then you get the you get the letter on Sunday, uh, and that's when they like they tell you what you're the results. And, uh, oh. my, so one of my goals in Animal Crossing was that, um, uh, I guess, like, if you get, I want to say it's, like, 30,000 points, you get, like, a bronze plaque, and then, uh, I think 50,000 is silver, and then gold, I want to say, is, like, 100,000. Um. Okay. And those, and then you get, and then you get a bronze trophy at, I think, 110,000, silver is 120, and then gold to my knowledge, is at least 150k. Uh, and so, I, my goal was, I wanted to get a gold trophy. Because I got all the plaques, I'm like, okay, cool, I'm done. And then they gave me a trophy, and I'm like, well, fuck, now I gotta get the trophies now. So, uh, I completed, so, this past Sunday, I got, I got 153,000, I think it was like 153,000 points, I got an S rank, and I got a gold trophy for, from the HHA. So I'm gonna hope, I want to hope that's all of, like, the accolades I can get from the HHA. I'm hoping. Because at this point, I'm kind of running out of ideas of how to decorate my house. I'm not going to lie. I, I like, re-outfitted my entire... Oh, I didn't show people my my house. Oh, well, I'll do that. I'll do that some other time. Maybe next time when we... I'm waiting for you for the podcast. Um, <laughs> but, like, I redecorated. So when you walk into my house, um, my main room that you walk in... When you first walk into was just, like... Basically, those, like, miscellaneous room was, like, where, like, I threw, like, a bunch of furniture everywhere. I had, like, just things that, like, I thought were cool. Um, like, it had, it really had, like, no sort of design, uh, like, theme whatsoever. It was just kind of miscellaneous. But it's still, like, it didn't look bad. It just, nothing really, like, mixed together. And then, uh-huh. um, the, all the other rooms had, like, a theme. So, like, I had, like, a workout training room. Uh, in the back was, like, my, it was, like, an under-the-sea seashell uh little mermaid like bedroom uh i had like i had a a whole like office den area uh to the left and then upstairs was like a bamboo garden like sanctuary and then downstairs i had this like really cute uh like fruit uh cafe Uh, okay but so the for a while uh i was getting like a hundred thirty thousand points um and that was like the highest that i could get get which was really annoying because nicole my sister she plays this game and Mm -hmm. her house is it's so bad like three of the rooms are not decorated at all they're like just plain white wallpaper and like completely empty no furniture uh i think it's actually two rooms uh and then like her her floors are like completely just wood like they're just empty rooms and she's easily getting like 140k points from the hha and i'm just like what the fuck are you doing and how <laughs> like so how so I'm, you're just jelly i'm yeah i'm getting fucking outclassed 
and I'm putting all this work into my fucking house, and she's doing literally nothing, and she's doing better than me. And it pissed me off to no end. And so I was like, all right, where where am I going wrong? And like HHJ is like, you should have more furniture that is like that matches more. And I'm like, all right, I gotta redecorate my entire my entire first room. I have to re- I redecorated it. I had uh, and I went in. I went. Uh, I bought a, a bed called the Imperial Bed, and it's like it's basically like it's a four post bed, but it's mm-hmm. like really like think like feudal Chinese style. And okay. there's there's a bunch of furniture like that. That's it's all called Imperial furniture, but like all the furniture is like at least seventy k. <laughs> like Ooh, like it, that's how much it costs. So I'm just like, all right, fuck it. Fine, I got the wallpaper, I got the flooring, I just need the furniture. Like, I'm gonna deck this room out, yo. And so I, I did that, and I, I finally got it. So that's the first goal in Animal Crossing. Second goal nice. in Animal Crossing is there are some there are rare flowers that uh, can grow, but I guess secret, so secretly, Animal Crossing has, like, has, uh, okay, in general, Animal Crossing has a star rating system where you can talk to Isabel, and she'll tell you, like, what rating what people are rating your island as and it goes from one to five stars um on top of that it has a secret one a secret uh, rating system and it's for flowers specifically uh and okay. if you i think it also goes from one to five and if you have a five star rating um you have a chance of your your island is more likely to grow gold roses and i think it's lily of the valley flowers um and so I'm trying, and I think to get to that five star rating, I think you have to have like, I want to say you have to have like every color of flower imaginable, and I think I'm missing like three of them. So I'm like desperately trying to, like I've laid out my flowers in like a specific pattern, so that way mm-hmm. they have a like higher chance of like producing the flower, the colors that I need. And then, but like I found out that simply watering your flowers or like having like rain, like just having it rain in general. It's like a 5% chance of getting different colored flowers. Uh, and I think if you have people, if you have other visitors water them, or if you have villagers water them, it's like a 15% chance. Uh, and uh. I would have other people water them, but I don't like people. And every time I invite <laughs> people to come to my island, they always fuck with my shit. So I'm just kind of <laughs> like, no. So my next option is I have to hope to God that my villagers will water my flowers for me. But a lot of the times, like, so I have it where, how my island is situated. I have, like, my residence services center, and then on both, either side, I have my museum and my shop. And I've outlined that area with uh, just regular flowers, and then I've outlined it again with, like, a hedge fence. Um, so because there's something blocking the way, and I even put, like, a road there, too, because, like, there's no, there's basically no open space where the flowers can propagate. Um mm-hmm. And it pisses me off because there's a perfectly good flower bed that needs to get watered. And what do my villagers do? They'll go to the flowers that literally cannot propagate. And I'm like, oh, I'll water this flower. This flower looks like it needs to be watered. And I'm like, you motherfuckers. I'm going to fucking scream. (laughs) So my village, I can't rely on my villagers because my villagers are stupid. And they won't water the correct flowers. So... I am, I'm playing the 5% game, basically. And so that's the second goal, is try to get gold roses and to get a 5-star rating for flowers. And then the last goal on my island is to get a 5-star rating just in general for my island. Uh, I'm currently at 4 stars, and every time I talk to Isabel, Isabel will, like, tell you what, um, like, what your rating is and then, like, how to make it better. Uh, and I think I've talked to Isabel probably, like, 10 times since I've gotten a five-star rating. And every time she tells me, she's just like, just put more shit on the island. Like, just decorate more. And I'm like, okay. Okay. Uh, all right. I, I guess I'll just go throw trash just on the island, I guess. So I'm like at this weird crossroads of like, I'm trying to decorate my island, but I'm running out of ideas and like ways to decorate my island. Because I was like, there's only so much space. And I just like, I don't, there's, like, I don't have any, there's nothing good that, like, I can buy right now that I'm like, oh, I can, I know where to put this, or I know where to put this, and I'm like, okay, uh, what else could I do? Uh, 
Want to buy a sandbox? I'll put a sandbox somewhere. So, Animal Crossing is a struggle, but it's also, um, it's a whole thing. It's a whole yeah. thing for me, but I'm enjoying it so far. It's it's fun, but those are like the last things that I, I want to do in Animal Crossing. After that, uh, I'll probably actually just stop playing it, low-key. Once you get all your yeah stuff done. Yeah, once I get all my stuff done, that that's pretty much it. Like, I'll probably play it for, like, events and stuff like that, but, like... I am I am very slowly starting to run out of stuff to do on Animal Crossing. Um, yeah. That being said, they are putting out an update, I think, in July 2nd, which will allow you to, like, actually swim in the ocean and, like, go underwater and, like, find stuff. So I'm like, okay, well, that'll be interesting. So, nice. So we'll see if that keeps me interested for a little bit longer. Um, Sorry, I'm currently looking at... Uh, uh, sprites from street fighter because i want to put some more stuff on my on my uh (laughs) oh my uh like on your like uh on your capture yeah yeah i know i know you have like the dancing vegeta i actually was gonna ask you about that just because of i actually just upgraded my i just changed the resolution for my camera actually Mm -hmm. because i used to i used to do four by three resolution and then i I changed it to 16 by 9 instead, um, which I didn't realize this until I changed it. Um, but the uh, there's if you look at like how my camera is situated now, there is so much more space like that was not that you could not see originally. And I'm just like, hmm. oh, my God, there's so much more room here. Like it is yeah. actually insane. Um, but that being said, I had to like. So I had to like just kind of modify and move stuff around uh, in my layout, and now there's like this weird, there's this weird section right below me that there's just like nothing there, and I'm like, I need to put something here, but I don't know what to put, and so I'm like, I might, so I was actually meaning to ask you about that because I might put something there because I'm like, so like it's just like it's me, the C Plus Podcast banner featuring Hex and Shin, and then just right below me, there's it's just nothing, and I'm like, man, that looks boring. Yeah, I I I like uh, seeing little sprites, but that's more of a personal thing because I I've always loved two D, well mm-hmm. certain two D games, mostly fighters and stuff, because they they have like moving animations and three D stuff can get hard. Like yeah. sometimes it doesn't look super great. Yeah. So. Uh yeah, you can. There's like a lot of sprite resources and stuff. Mm-hmm. I honestly never even thought about grabbing some sprites from um. Uh, Chain of Memories, mm. uh, like the original Chain of Memories. Yeah. So that's probably something I'm gonna look at at doing because I have it actually. One of the sprite animations is my follow, uh, uh, animation. Mm. It's like Axel charging up oh, with nice. his chakrams. Yeah. Like that seems appropriate. That's kind of my thing. Yeah. So yeah. Um. Oh. All right. Love you, bye. Um. Bye, Emily. That would be fun. Just bye. Did you tell her I said bye? I, I, and she said bye back. Yes. Nice. Hells yeah. Hells yeah. <laughs> I had. Um, so yeah. Uh, uh, I don't have a way to segue into this very well right now. I mean, you can just go into it. <laughs> all right. All right. I've so, learned that that's the easiest way to segue into it. You just kind of go into it. Yeah. So I uh, have... <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Here. So my, the game I started to play today, I was I was hanging out with uh, uh, Xavier, uh, my roommate, for those who don't know. He might... He's been on my stream before a couple times. Anyway, um, he and I uh, were playing some games beforehand because I didn't have to run a ton of errands today, which was really nice. I was able to just sit back and relax before I was... Uh, uh, we did this, and um, so I, a while ago, there's a really cool game store that's fairly close to my house. It's like 15 minutes away, and they have a bunch of more retro games, depending on what you consider retro at this point. Is um, uh, I go there mostly to get like GameCube uh, and PS2 games, because I'm trying to collect those 
back up but they have i mean they have stuff from forever ago it's weird to think that i think at this point the bar for anything that's retro is like it's like pre-360 i think is the bar now yeah i don't consider ps2 games to be retro personally but i know a lot of people do so it's like but i I think we only say that though is because i mean the ps2 was what we played on you know when we were kids like that was that's what we grew up with exactly so yeah, that's it's really odd to consider that that is yeah retro. I know, yeah. I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. It's also weird to think that Makes like me feel old. 30, 30, 40 years in the future, fucking PS4 and Xbox One might be considered retro. Yeah, like that that's is strange. so odd. I'm not entirely sure how <laughs> that's gonna because it like this feels like you know natural progression like how do you think people who were playing on an nes feel like when yeah. it originally came out right yeah because i yeah. i wasn't i wasn't old enough I, that came out in what 87 mm-hmm. uh, i think so something like that nes what one uh 83 in japan when did it come out in the u.s wow. 88 85 That's... so even earlier than that god damn yeah. yeah so i i wasn't even born for another nine years Lord. wow um yeah i was born wait you said 87 or 83 85 in north america 85 83 so, in japan yeah same so yeah nine nine years Mm-hmm. Oh. anyway so uh i i picked up a uh a couple of i've i've been trying to like fill out some series so i got basically Every Tony Hawk game, I've been trying to go through those. That's been really fun. Uh, I grabbed all of the Naruto Ultimate Ninja games that were at least l- released in the U.S. because I had a lot of fond memories of those. Like, I 100%ed them as a kid. And then going back now, those are really hard. <laughs> I don't know how I had... I, I just had time. That's that's the thing that I don't have anymore is yeah. I don't have time to just sit down and do that stuff. Yeah. And then uh, a series that I never got to play, which was the Clash of Ninja games. So Ultimate Ninja is more of more akin to just a basic 2D fighter. Um, it's not very good. It's very <laughs> clunky. Uh, I wish that my young brain was more evolved to realize that it was not very good. Um, it definitely uh, uh, aged better as or like uh, as the games progressed, like they got, you know, more fine. They were not nearly as stiff and, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So by the time uh, the third and fourth games were out, they, it was pretty OK. Uh, the U.S. did not get the fifth game. And after that, then they moved on to the Ultimate Ninja Storm games, which I'm sure I'm sure you've seen before. Yeah. Um, yeah. Those are the more modern generation stuff. They had them on the. Uh, 360 and ps3 and then they ported all of them over to the ps4 and uh they have a triple pack right Mm -hmm. don't play the first one it's really bad okay it's super bad it's super slow but okay to to go back to the clash of ninja stuff uh it started on the gamecube and north america only got two and then they they moved over to the wii with the series called ultimate ninja revolution uh no sorry clash of ninja revolution and the north america only got three games so i was playing the third one because that's the only one in north america that uses the shippuden style of characters yeah and it only goes the game only goes into them rescuing gara that is as far as it gets into the story which is not very far it's like the first full arc yeah and uh the gameplay is really rough like, like it's very fun, actually. Uh, it's really simple. It's like baby's first Tekken, kind of. Um, it's it's really smooth. I have only had one instance where the game like actually slowed to a crawl, and it was just because of uh, a really interesting sequence of explosions that kind of slowed the game down. This is also a Wii, so it's not the most powerful thing in the world. Right. Um, and I'm not a heathen and i am not using wiimotes because that would be a disaster well i like, think of how uh, cool it would be if you became like really good at the game via yeah, but it's Wii- not. Wiimotes, Mm-mm. Though. Mm-mm. it's not fun 
But like, can't, can't attest to the fact that it's like, not fun. But like, think how cool it would be though. Just play it on but a game like... controller. <laughs> so, uh, Xavier and I were, were playing through it and there were definitely some issues. There were some points where uh, we hit walls uh, and we had to, I, I looked up some videos to kind of get an idea of what you could do against certain uh, enemies uh, because there was one fight. I can't remember exactly. Oh, yeah. So you have to use um, Konkuro, the puppet guy, yeah, against uh, Sasori when he has, like, the scorpion tail. Do you know a lot of the characters from Naruto? I know a decent amount. Uh, the Shippuden ones, I definitely am... Uh, I'm not nearly as familiar with, but like okay. the at least like anything that was introduced in the main series, uh, I definitely know. Okay, well, so Conqueror, uh, yes. obviously he's the puppet guy. Yep. And um, so you have your basic attacks, and then you have your like ninja tools attacks, and then you have a grab button. So one pu- puppet is only useful for grabs. And one puppet is only used for, like, ninja tools, but it attacks, but they do not follow you. They they only attack when you tell them to, and if they are very far away from you because you are fighting the enemy, they will take their sweet time in getting to you mm. because they have to use their animation to move. Uh-huh. It's really bad. Huh. So, it... Uh, and then it was just, it was it was a rough fight. I was able to get it after my second try, but it took Xavier like eight, and he was like, "Nope, this is on you. This is all <laughs> you." There was another fight where you you had to play as guy against guy. So I, I'm assuming this was like him training inside of his own mind. I don't exactly remember what episode that was, but if you so anytime uh, you control both characters. It is literally a mirror image, oh, okay. um, pretty much. Weird. So you move back, the enemy moves back. You you dash to the side, the enemy moves to the side. And um, so uh, if you and an opponent strike at the exact same time, it like nothing happens. It's it, like the game slows down for a second and then you guys like will kind of break away eventually unless you keep connecting moves. Uh that are you know at the exact same time uh-huh. so if you would try to attack him you will both punch each other's fists or kick each other's feet right or whatever because he's going to do the same stuff you do right and there are these little obstacles that are like scattered throughout the the stage which is downright the worst part of the whole thing of the whole game it's super bad because there's like rocks or like tree stumps and when you are against an enemy that's really hard and you're trying to like get momentum to 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 back away and then you get locked on a tree stump yeah. it's really frustrating um but the whole point of this fight is to trick the ai into kind of you have to get behind him and then so that you are both facing one direction and the 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 most complicated part isn't necessarily uh getting behind him it's remembering which one you are <laughs> because they are not Wait, color coordinated. So there's no there's no differential between like who you nope. are. Oh my god, what? You just have to remember. That's so dumb. And, and there's like a like a kind of a dashing mechanic so that you because it, it's a three D plane game. Right. Yeah. So you can go from side to side and and like forward and back uh, on on the other axis. And when you guys are really close to each other, you kind of just spin in a circle. And it's so quick that it's really hard to figure out. So I was like, oh, I, I finally got behind him. And then I started attacking and I was like, wait a second. That's the wrong oh one. Oh my God. That's amazing. And um, I like to so, think that you're, you're trying to do this and then you spin around and it's like a shitty version of like what ball, what cup is the ball under? Oh, yeah. <laughs> just no, like, absolutely. That is 100% what it is. Because so I was I was on a tree stump, right? And then I got them both both right on opposite sides of it and then i'm i'm trying to trick the ai to to like get locked in a in a specific animation where he's kind of hiding and then my guy can go around but they just keep spinning and i'm like i don't even remember which one is which and then i'm like i'll try attacking maybe that'll help and then they both start attacking and i'm like that didn't help that didn't help whatsoever (laughs) so um 
there's also a timer. So I think there was only like 90 seconds with which to do this. So I I actually managed to hit the the clone or whatever uh once like with with a small combo and I was like okay, I'll just wait out the timer, right? No, you have to actually beat him. So you have to do 100% of his health and, and and before the timer runs out while figuring out how to get behind him it's uh, it's not exactly easy jesus um and the other part is like yes you can hurt each other but the enemy always does just a little bit more damage than you do obviously just just like by a smidgen mm. and it's really frustrating so it took it took quite a bit of time now we're on the very last fight and it's really hard like it's really hard. Good. Uh and it's apparently the thing that keeps people from play like from actually beating this game even though a lot of these like the Clash of Ninja Revolution games are very well received. They got they got like 7 of them in Japan. Wow. Uh yeah, because they're really fun. But they're not or at least that one is not easy because you're fighting Datara um or Daydara. I don't know how Daydara. to actually say his name. Yeah, Daydara. And um he's the the clay explosive dude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He can pretty much uh one shot you. It's really frustrating. So you're playing as Naruto with the one tailed nine tail cloak thing. So it's like, hey, you finally get to use a really strong character. Too bad he is slow as shit. <laughs> and Daydara yeah. is fast as fuck and has exploding things that he can charge up to do 90% of your health in one shot. Jesus. So you have to... Uh, so, uh, so not only do you have to beat him, but you have to beat him using a, like the secret technique. So you have to have your, a, your max chakra bar and you have to get him low enough and you have to hit him with the secret technique with a max chakra bar and all of that is very hard jesus i got really close on my second attempt and then i just got dicked mm. and then i've tried probably another 10 times since then and i'm it's waiting in my garage i'm gonna take care of it when we're done with all of this <laughs> and it's the only way to unlock characters and apparently to un uh unlock every single character or at least have the ability to buy all the characters you have to play every single difficulty and i don't know which difficulty i am on oh god and i don't want to play a harder version oh of this. god yeah just what you're gonna get done and it's gonna be like congratulations you beat normal oh yeah i'm i'm fully expecting that, that like, i was on the oh, easiest difficulty no <laughs> fully expecting it to be uh the lowest setting and i'm like D -d -d no <laughs> i'll i'll just use my my dolphin emulator and cheat to get all the characters <laughs> there you go. There it'll you go. run better and look better on here anyway uh, speaking of getting dicked on um uh esper just said uh but then plot twist the hard difficulty is actually easier oh uh, yeah you, you pray to god that's in. the case yeah um, but speaking of getting dicked on, so uh, what when you got off of Final Fantasy last night, uh, mm -hmm. I joined a couple of my other friends, Ow. and they were farming mounts. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the like dogs, that. right? Yeah, they were doing dogs. They were doing dog mounts, and uh, I have I have almost all of them except for three of them, and okay. the three that I'm missing are specifically um, the like the four lords uh, trials. So it's uh, Biako. Uh, A.K.A. the right, Jade right, Stoa. Right. Uh, I don't know what Suzaku's is called, and then the Reba Snakes, which is Seiryu. Um, but yep. I'm missing those three. And so, uh, my friend Dan, he he and I were formed a party together, and we were just looking through Party Finder to see what like other people were uh, looking for, and we saw one that was for uh, Suzaku, and we're like, okay, sure, neither of us have this mount yet. We'll we'll go ahead and do it. Um, so there are two ways to get the mount. One way is you beat the fight, and a chest pops up, 
and you hope to God that it's in the chest and that you roll high enough so you can get it. Mm -hmm. The other way is that every time you beat the fight, you get a, a totem, and you can redeem 99 totems, and you can just buy the mount outright. Uh, hmm. I had, when we started, when we like joined the party to, to farm, I had, I think, 12 totems. Dan had 60. <laughs> Uh, so that means that Dan had done this fight 60 times already previously and still had not gotten the mount yet. Uh, wow. Yeah. So we joined in. We, we were running, we were running the, the, the fight over and over again. And the entire time. So the fight, I think we were doing it unsynced with uh, eight people. Uh, the fight took, takes about like five minutes, actually. I think it's like 4.45 was our best That's time. It's not that bad. Yeah, it was pretty good. It was pretty good, all things considered. Um, but I think we ran it, fifth, the first 15 times we ran it, only one mount dropped. Like, oh my God. out of the 15 times. And we're like, fucking okay, I guess. Uh, we'll just keep going. So we keep going. And I think we get through like 20 more fights, like 20 more runs. And... Uh, no, we get through, like, I think 15 more, uh, and our second mount drops, and Dan got it with, like, a, I think he got it, like, with, like, a 56 or something like that was what he rolled. Hmm. Uh, and so Dan was happy that he got all, the, all his, he got his mount, but oh, yeah. then I'm like, cool, nice, Dan, so what are you gonna do with, like, the 80-some totems that you have? Because <laughs> I'm just like, at this point, what, like, because uh, we, we were getting to the point of, like, at this, at that point, Dan was literally thinking, like, he was at, like, I think, 82 totems by the time we finished. Like, he was literally about to, he was like, I might just keep going till I hit 99 and then just buy it outright, honestly. Because, like, I'm, it's getting to the point that it's, like, it's not worth it at all. Um, but, yeah, I think we, I think collectively that night we ran, we ran the fight, I think, probably 30, 35 times. And we only got wow. two mounts to spawn. I... So... You do that. Because dogs, man. Because dogs. <laughs> we want a lot of... It. No. Well, maybe. Because afterwards, we did uh, we did Ruby Weapon mm -hmm. afterwards to get dragons. So the, the mounts that are available is ARR is horses, Heaven's Ward is birds, uh, Stormwood is dogs, and Shadowbringers yep. is dragons. And so we joined Ruby Weapon because uh, we all, both of us didn't have the mount for that either. Uh, and I think three runs in, I got it. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. And then and then our party disbanded, so we're like, well, I guess we're not doing that anymore. Okay, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so, it was, like, sort of worth it. He got his dog, I got a dragon, so it worked out. But, like, oh, man. Running Suzaku just over and over again was just so bad. Because we, we just and... kept getting dicked on the entire time. I think right now I have, I think, 23 tokens now, I think. Maybe 30. But it's, That's so yeah, it's not great. It's not great. Um, not farming. Yeah. I need to find actual animated sprites. Those are harder to find. Sometimes mm. they're just bright sheets. Anyway, um, so... We still need to do... What am I working on right now? You are currently working on... Uh, birds? Birds? birds. Yeah, You're yeah I'm working birds on birds. Right now, as far as yeah. Bounce goes. I think you're asking, like, side quest stuff. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, birds. We're doing birds right now. Which, uh, yeah, I think all the other all the other fights, aside from Ravana and uh, Bismarck, we can't do with just two of us. Yeah. Um, I think we need at least four, I think. I know we need uh yeah, I think we need we need four people at least. Just so that way we have enough damage to skip certain phases. Um uh, uh -huh. and then for I think it's Sephiroth, we need five people. Because there's a mechanic there that it will divide the party in half and you have to make sure that you have enough people for it. Um and if you have any less, anything less than five, it'll 
offset it. So like all people, all the, everybody would be like one color or something like that, and it's just awkward. Okay. So, yeah, birds are probably the hardest one just because of it. It's just there's just annoying mechanics in them that you have to deal with. But mm-hmm. I mean, it's not like I I see people in Party Finder all the time that are like asking for birds anyway. So it's not. It shouldn't be too hard for us to to find okay. people. Cool. Yeah, it's super fun. Yeah. Yeah, if you can get a good party going, then it's like you can just you just knock them out, honestly. Yeah. Which is super uh, super nice. So I wanted to talk to you uh, about Immortal Hulk. Okay. Because it's really good, and I know that I've been I've been telling you to to uh, read it for a while. But I, I, I'm going to try and talk about it without revealing too much to give you, like, uh, kind of a, a kick in the butt. Like, okay. this is really good, so you should read it. Okay. Um, so I don't know how much you know about the Hulk. I, you read Totally Awesome Hulk, right? Yes. Okay. I never read that, <laughs> so I, I have no context for what happened. Uh, did you okay. read Civil War 2? Yes. And you know how bad that was. Yes. And the whole thing of Hawkeye killing yes. Bruce Banner. Yes. Okay. Cool. So, Bruce Banner comes back to life. That's the whole point of this. And that... Um, I, I don't even know how, because they don't even explain it, at least very well wait really i thought this yeah. was i thought this was a separate like just like not connected storyline no this is this is this is canon oh. this is marvel universe oh yes bruce banner is alive okay interesting yep. uh, okay oh, that's how much right. they hated civil war 2 wow okay yeah okay hmm. so um i don't i also don't know how how they treated gamma in um in totally awesome hulk i know that a lot of people really liked amadeus uh cho uh that he was really popular and it was really cool to have uh like asian diversity in uh comics is that like it's actually kind of rare like yeah you know like i can't they they do make a lot more diverse characters now but the asian is still kind of a minority within superheroes yeah i can only think of two superheroes off the top of my head that are like asian uh and that's amadeus cho and then silk uh which is oh yeah Spider-Man. cindy moon yeah cindy moon, um yeah. there there is an entire uh chinese justice league um in in dc uh and it was <laughs> so uh there was a series <laughs> called uh new superman Mm-hmm. And it was actually pretty good. Um, it was written by, uh, I can't remember him his name, um, but he's Korean. I think he's half Chinese, half Korean. Mm-hmm. Um, so it it's uh it's all about you know uh, I think the new Fifty Two Superman when he died, uh, his powers went a bunch of different places, and I think China was able to capture some of his power and put it into this kid. Oh, and interesting. He, yeah, and he created a uh, Chinese Justice League, and it was actually pretty well done. Um, unfortunately, it got canceled because it wasn't selling well enough. But I I read plenty of it, and it was it was pretty good. There was there was a Chinese Batman, a Chinese uh, Wonder Woman. There was an <laughs> an undisclosed so uh, like ethnicity Asian Flash girl. Okay. Uh, I don't know if she was actually Chinese or not. It was pretty good. It's so weird. Yeah, yeah. It, it it's definitely like it seems strange. Um, like why would you like? Uh, it it seems kind of forced mm. when when looking at at it from an outside perspective. But it was handled very well. Yeah, it was really cool. Yeah. And it, like it's it's not um from from what I read and what I I have encountered in Chinese culture. It was very respectful because it was coming from somebody who was a part of it. Mm. You know, they, right, they yeah. did have to kind of dumb it down. Yeah. Uh, 
you know, so so the white person could understand <laughs> what's going on. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I'm actually so, uh, planning on reading Justice League actually relatively soon. Uh, um, the Scott Snyder run is really good. All right, it's so I don't know the wh- original DC Rebirth is very bad. Okay, and then they started it over, uh, and Scott Snyder began a run and that is i believe what has carried into now i don't okay. think he's writing on it anymore but that's where everybody's like this is the best justice league and all of the all the current justice league roster at least what he was writing was everything from the uh tv show okay that i watched as a kid okay i'll have to look again i think it's i think it's might be that one i basically was like trying to find just like the most current run of justice league um but really, the only reason I got it, oh, I was like, I was like thinking about reading Justice League was primarily because of Thor. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, because I was, I was just like really curious about like, I wonder if they ever tied it in, which I don't think they did. But I was just kind of like, oh, uh, like the stuff with Thor, I was just like, oh, that's really cool, and how like they to show like the magnitude of of the stuff that's happening in Thor. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was just like, I was just really, really curious about it. And then I, I read like the first couple issues of Justice League, and I'm like, this is pretty good. I might keep reading this. Um, yeah, I know that they make references to Thor and some Marvel stuff uh, in Justice League. Uh, let's see. So it is, it is um, uh, Justice League Volume 4. Okay. Uh, is where all of that really starts. Okay. So it's it's it started with a new issue number one. Mm-hmm. It is up to issue forty seven. Uh, Scott Snyder stopped writing it. Okay. Um. But it's by another fairly solid writer. I'm trying to find when he stopped writing it around issue thirty five. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thirty six. There, I think he stopped at either thirty-seven or thirty-nine. Okay, that's not that bad. Yeah, so it's a it's a decent enough run. He stopped at thirty-nine. Okay, so that's that's a a big chunk. Like yeah. that's that's long. Yeah, it's um, pretty good. And yeah, so he he got through he got through a lot of it. It was really cool. Um, yeah, comics have have been interesting lately. Um, and Immortal Hulk has been really cool. Because it changed the way that the Hulk works. Um, in that uh, Bruce Banner is immortal. Right now. Currently. Okay. So you can okay. kill Bruce Banner. <laughs> you can kill Bruce Banner. But at night. He will come back as the Hulk. And then Bruce Banner will be alive again. Oh weird. And this is. That's like kind of terrifying. Of, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. That's like super and, terrifying. And this is a a different version of the Hulk than has existed before. Mm. So, um, it, uh, Bruce Banner has, uh, it's not multiple personality disorder. Um, it's it's similar to it. Um, it's not technically schizophrenia either. I, it has another name, and they were just talking about it in one of the issues that I read. But let's let's just say it's multiple personality disorder sure um or it's some dissociative thing i think actually anyway um so there are different hulk personalities um that there so there there is um scar hulk that is the one that was planet hulk for a while okay there's professor hulk there is joe fix it um and there is currently the What's Joe um, Fix It do? Joe Fix It is the original Hulk. Oh. So the the Gray Hulk from the comics. Oh. That's okay. not. That is the original version of what Hulk was. Joe Fix It oh, okay. is a gangster. Like so, he actually talks with uh like kind of a gangster yeah. New Yorker yeah. accent. Uh, which is really weird. So, uh, in he shows up in this because all of the other personalities are dormant right now, except for Joe Fixit, uh, showed up, and he's like, it's literally the Hulk with 
with uh, like a 1940s suit and a big old hat on <laughs> in a limo. It's That's really interesting. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. It's so great. And I, he, I think he fights the thing. Huh. At some point, yeah, it's it's really interesting. But uh, the Immortal Hulk is uh, very different from all the other personalities. He's like he's extremely destructive. Duh, it's the Hulk. Duh. Um, but he's he's not a good guy necessarily. Oh. He's he's trying to destroy the Earth. Oh, um, fun. Okay, cool, cool. cool. Or at least cool. humanity, <laughs> because uh, he is influenced by uh literally marvel's devil so not mephisto not any of the other like satanic deities so within marvel i had asked you before if you knew who the one above all was yeah the one above all is essentially he is the creator of the marvel universe he is like the progenitor of anything that has ever happened he is actual god actual god um And he has appeared several times um, in Marvel Comics, very, very rarely. There was a, I think the the first time was when uh, Ben Grimm died, the thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And the rest of the Fantastic Four went to go get his soul back. And uh, they brought him back and he was, they met the one above all and he was Jack Kirby, the original guy who drew the Fantastic Four. Oh, fun. Um, he has also taken the appearance of Stan Lee before. Cute. Um, and he actually appeared to Peter Parker one time, uh, as just a homeless guy Mm. in New York. Uh, I think Peter was having issues because, uh, it was around Civil War, I think, and Aunt May had gotten shot. Oh. And he was, like, going through some stress, so the one above all came, and talked to peter freaking parker just like don't be an idiot hey, and hey, hey champ <laughs> your your aunt's gonna be okay and then he makes a deal with the devil hey and aunt may is okay and i feel like the one above all was just like that is not at all what i this, <laughs> that is not what i wanted to have happen this, at that's, all that's not oh. the route you should have gone dude <laughs> um so uh as uh, until immortal hulk happened there was never like a counterpart, like a direct counterpart, because he is the ultimate good or whatever, however you want to say it. But then now is there is the one below all. The one below all is the source of gamma. Like, like gamma radiation. Ga- okay. And Weird. so when Bruce Banner became the Hulk. And gamma radiation was, like, infused into his being. It tore a hole into wherever the one below all is from. So he started to infest gamma irradiated people. So Hulk's old friends. uh, uh, Not She-Hulk, but, like, if She-Hulk was there, he could go into her body and start doing really bad things and his whole goal (laughs) his whole goal is to take over the hulk and destroy the universe Uh uh-huh there's a a specific uh comic that takes place billions of years into the future and the only thing that exists are uh these sentient beings that are in no way human they're just highly or evolved aliens and uh there's one star and one planet left and that's uh the home planet of these things and the hulk is like in a universe sized being now and he just flies through the universe destroying planets because he killed galactus and franklin richards who were the who are the only oh, two so people metal. who would uh uh like Marvel said the only two beings that would exist after the Marvel universe would live is Galactus and Franklin Richards. They're they're that's two so most powerful That's so awesome. Beings. <laughs> that's yeah. so amazing. Yeah, and this is all <laughs> coming out of Immortal Hulk. Jesus. Um so okay, 
real quick, what issue is Immortal Hulk on now? 34. 34, okay. Yep. Okay, and it's ending on 50. On 50, yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, the new so thirty four just came out last week, so it's going to be another month before. Yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, it's really good. It's really cool. Um, I I know next to nothing about um the other Hulk stories. Really, I started to read a little bit of Planet Hulk, and it's really good. I just never finished it. Yeah, same. I read a little bit of Planet Hulk. Um, I don't think I ever finished it though. Greg Pack is a really good writer. Yeah. The art on it's also really cool. Um, but uh oh yeah, and currently the issue that I'm reading, they bring up uh Dario whatever his name is, the bull guy. Oh yeah. From... Uh, I think it's Dario Agon or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Agaris or something. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he's he's a prominent figure at where I am. Okay. Because it the the book has taken a very meta turn all of a sudden and it's talking about how you know politicians and corporations are are destroying the planet <laughs> and and uh the, it has some police stuff in there uh which is weird because the issue that i'm reading or it, it's been in the past 3 issues that was in october of last year so this is like way ahead of when all of this stuff was currently going down. Right. And it's really interesting because there's a there's like a teen brigade that are all wearing um like m- green masks or hulk masks and they're fighting against the Roxxon establishment and hey. trying to take down the police and stuff and it's like nice. d- did did did, did Tifa we, exist before? We, uh, uh, <laughs> I think somebody was reading art, Immortal Hulk and then they got some ideas. Life, but in this reality, life imitates art. <laughs> yeah, it was really cool. I was like, all right, that's pretty interesting. Huh. Yeah, so uh, I would, yeah. Uh, I hope that it has piqued your interest even more because it is very cool. Yeah. And you don't need you seriously don't need to know anything. Yeah, about I, I you just actually, need to know yeah. who Bruce Banner is. I definitely, is. I definitely want to read it now just because of because originally what turned me off from it originally was I didn't think it was canon because I don't like canon stuff. Mm-hmm. Non canon stuff doesn't interest me nearly as much just because I know it's like well it doesn't really go anywhere and it doesn't connect to like any broader picture. It's just sort of a thing there, and I'm like eh, it, yeah. that bores me. Um, and so, except for Cosmic Ghost Rider. Because yeah. that's cool as shit. Yeah, <laughs> except for that one. But so, uh, yeah. But so the fact that it's actually connected and it's canon is is definitely definitely really really interesting. And it also, I also like the fact, I also like the idea that there are different Hulk personalities because mm-hmm. that that in itself is like, oh, that's weird. Yeah, <laughs> like that's super super strange, and especially because it's the Hulk. Like, and they I, they all talk to him. Yeah, like yeah, I would I would admit that I think. My favorite Marvel superheroes are probably Hulk, Thor, uh, Doctor Strange, and probably Spider Man. Um, Iron Man That's used good, to be on. Iron list. Man used to be up there. Uh, Dude, Tony's reading, just a fucking dickhead. I, it's not even just that. It's just like like just the 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 way that Iron Man twenty twenty is going right now. It just I've heard bores, it's not doing too well. It's so boring, and it's so it's also like. It's also, like, weird, because it's, like, Tony has had this, like, existential crisis of, like, he's not the real Tony Stark, he's just an AI replica, mm-hmm. and the real Tony Stark died in Civil War II, and I'm just like, okay. Because of Captain Marvel. The, yeah. And they are still pushing Captain Marvel, even though they, she killed Tony it's Stark. It's actually really funny, because of, uh, there's a point <sighs> where, like, he comes to this realization and and carol danvers like she he talks to carol danvers and uh she goes tony are you okay and he goes and he goes in his head he's he's thinking um yeah uh not really because like, i just realized that uh you're not actually talking to the real tony stark and that the real one was murdered by you a couple months ago in the civil war and he just goes i'm fine, <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> like he yeah, goes no, through I'm this fine. entire like okay. like list of things he's like I'm fine. I'm good. <laughs> well, you killed me. Uh, I'm having an existential crisis yeah. as an AI. Not, so that's yeah, pretty not cool. great, but you know, it's fine. 
we're fine. I am. I'm officially <laughs> depressed, and I'm just a computer chip. So yeah. you figure out how that one works. Yeah. And then he spirals back into alcoholism, and I'm just like, oh, for fuck's oh, sake. Oh, good. It's just yeah. it's so bad. Um, yeah. Yeah. To- like Stop Iron Man 2020 is just so it's so boring, and it, I'm just like I'm reading it, and I'm like I want it to get better, but like, oh, it's just so stupid. They need to bring back Arno Stark. They did. He's the villain. Oh, really? Arno's the villain. Yeah, because I oh. guess so. Here's what's happening from the from what I actually from what I've read so far in in Iron Man 2020. Um, hmm. They bring back Arno in like right before in like the previous arc, basically previous series because they mm-hmm. revamped it. Yeah, um, like but four times. Arno is now officially Iron Man, um, like officially because Tony Stark okay. is dead and he's tony stark because he's now a sentient ai has joined like the an underground like robot rebellion robot ai rebellion with machine man and uh arno's whole deal is he's about to like push out this like suit like world global like update and it will basically enslave the entire robotic population uh obviously the sentient robots don't like this uh, and so that's like their whole deal right now. And it's revealed that I guess there is like this threat that's coming to the earth. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't quite remember exactly, but it's like, it's like Galactus, but like worse apparently. Uh, and the only way it was like, Arnold was, I think it was like destined to like fight this thing. And in order to do so, he has to have an army. And so he's just going to, so he's pushing this update out to enslave the robots so that way he has this on hand army to fight this like galactus threat um and that's where that's honestly where i stopped reading basically because tony was like that's bullshit this is fucked up uh i'm gonna go break your shit now (laughs) tony needs to stop messing with arno because like (laughs) they have established one arno is smarter than him yeah yeah arno is super smart though arno he actually has all the rights to stark technology yeah and has, oh and then so so he, about that too he sold the rights to banetronics which is stark's competitors he oh, sold good, the rights okay. to uh the his competitors so now arno is, works for banetronics or whatever they're called i forget um, weird yeah and so it's it's a whole okay, fucking that's really like dumb. It, it's yeah it's weird like it's weird like sci-fi comic stuff superhero stuff mixed with like corporate espionage and and tactics and i'm like i this is get it trying to be too much it, yeah it's, it's you, trying to is do brian so michael things. bendis writing this again i don't know this sounds don't like remember. his shit <laughs> i don't remember but there's so many things happening in iron man 2020 that i'm just like i need this to stop right now <laughs> like i just need this to fucking stop <laughs> focus on one point please but there's so many things in Iron Man 2020 that I'm like, I'm trying to get through it, but I like, I get through like half the issue, and part of me is like, I don't care about this, and another half of me is like, I mean, I've already read through half of it, I might as well read the rest of it, like, <laughs> yeah, I've already wasted my time enough, I might as well go the full, the full way. Okay. So, yeah, Iron Man has been not great. Uh, Doctor Strange, I am, so I'm a couple, I'm like one or two issues behind on on my comics, but Doctor Strange, actually, I am liking a decent amount. Um, It's not too bad. Like, I I was a little disappointed because of when Doctor Strange became a surgeon, so Doctor Strange became a surgeon again. He got his hands back. (laughs) Um, Which you would think after 60 years, he would have got that back earlier yeah you you would have thought so but like he like he actually got them back like it was actually really cool because of what he what happened was um he was like i forget what he was happening but uh the issue that he got his hands back he um there was like a car accident with his mom and this child and this child had had to have like brain surgery but it's in like the middle of nowhere and so Mm -hmm. like no one can like they can't get him to a hospital fast enough and so what Dr. Strange ends up doing is that he's like, I have to perform this super difficult brain surgery that I have not performed in like over 20 years. Uh, oh, good. And so, and like, uh, he, what he does is he like makes a gamble or like he makes like a deal with 
um, like this alien like prophet, um, and it's like I can. It's like a spell book that he gets, and in the in the book in the book, it's a spell that will uh, give him that will te- teach him any spell that he needs. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a chance to do that, or it will cause him to cease to exist, or something like that. It's basically like it's either like gonna be really good for you or you're absolutely fucked, and it's like a fifty fifty shot. And so okay. he he's like, you know what? To save this kid, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna roll the dice. And so he does the spell, and uh, he's like, for a second, he's like, I I think it worked. And then his body starts disintegrating from his hands, and it's like, oh fuck, I fucked up, I fucked up. And then like you can, but then it like it reverses, and you can see like his tendons and his bones like reshaping and like reforming to get uh-huh. his hands back. And it's like it was really really cool, but it was like there was a good chance of like. Oh, Doctor Strange definitely fucked up. <laughs> mm. You, you kind of hope for it, but you're, at the same time, it's like, darn it. Um, but so that's how Doctor Han- Doctor Strange got his hands back and became a surgeon. Um, and then the the current series, oh. Surgeon Supreme, is it's pretty okay. Uh, I like it a lot. There are it's also slowly kind of going into the 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 territory of like trying to do too many things, but it is mm-hmm. keeping it to like. They're like two to three. They're like two major points, and then a third point that's like, "We'll we'll tuck this away, and we'll come back to it later." Um, and like currently, it's uh, Doctor Strange has like a colleague who's like a bo- he's like he's a doctor, but he's like a botanist. He's like he's like a advisor basically, uh-huh. uh, and he like lives on like the roof of the. He's a druid, uh, and it's awkward because Doctor Strange like meets him, and he's like, "Hey, long time no see," and it's like, "Yeah." Last time I saw you, you died. Uh, <laughs> what, How you doing, what, What's buddy? up with that? <laughs> and they're like, I'm like, ah, don't worry about that for now. It's fine. Um, and then uh, Doctor Strange also, so he also makes his own weapons now, like his own magical artifacts. Mm-hmm. And apparently, someone is stealing his artifacts. So, oh. yeah, like he can like the first like first issue, he like comes across like this random like he's like a like a street thug villain. Uh, mm-hmm. And it turns out that he's got, like, a magically infused crowbar. So someone's, like, stealing Doctor Strange's artifacts, taking the magic out of them, and then putting them into stuff, uh, into other stuff and, like, selling them on the black market. Huh. So he, he's, like, currently trying to figure out what's up with that right now from what okay. I remember reading. So it's That's... it's definitely really interesting. Um, so I'm, I'm liking it a lot. I think my make it, biggest complaint is I would want more of... Uh, like the struggle, surgery? yeah, more oh. surgery. Since like it's like he became a surgeon, so I want to see more surgery stuff, and so that's kind of my disappointment. But it's that would be a really okay. interesting comic. Yeah, there was because I think the I got like yeah, you get like a hint of it. There. Yeah, you get like a hint of it in the late like the late issue that I read, where it's like he gets this patient, and he's got like uh, this patient's got like this brain tumor he's trying to remove, but it turns out that. It's actually like this magical parasite, mm-hmm. uh, and the moment that Doctor Strange like he realizes it too late, and so the parasite like latches on to Doctor Strange's hand and is like trying to get it, is trying to force Doctor Strange to remove the tumor. But the moment he does that, it basically acts like a time bomb, and it will it'll like blow up like three blocks of the of like the the hospital uh, mm-hmm. from where the hospital is standing. So it's it was really interesting, but. Like, I wanted more stuff similar to that of, like, magical diseases yeah. and, like, actually doing surgery. And it's like, ah, cool. Crazy. Hmm. But, yeah. That didn't... That that doesn't happen maybe as much, and it makes me kind mm-hmm. of sad. I, I would be really... Like, I've never really... I'm... I like uh, Doctor Strange as a character, but I've never really sat down to read his books. Uh... He interests me a lot, but I I have seen and read some excerpts, and it's very wordy. Yeah, and it's not that I'm I'm against wordiness. Like I love reading, and I wouldn't read comics as much as I do if that weren't the case. But there's there's a weird level that you kind of have to balance. Yeah, I will. With I'll, comics, yeah, I'll admit that doctor strange is really really wordy like there are there are times where i'll like instead of just reading the page i'll kind of just skim through because there's just so much text sometimes um i it's like i was going to recommend like where to start with doctor strange and then like after you finish that like 
maybe go, like think about going continuing on. I would do, I think it's 2016 Doctor Strange is what it is. Okay. Um, and that's the, it's the war on science and magic where okay. um, this alien race comes to Earth and their sole purpose, they're all like science based and their sole purpose is to eliminate magic, like literally kill it. Uh, and so okay. they start talking, they start targeting like sorcerers and like magic wheelers and they start targeting like artifacts and like they even start targeting like the magical ley lines in the earth and they start like fucking shit up. Weird. Because uh, to them, si- uh, to them, apparently magic is like, it's just pure Satanism, essentially. And science is the only like true Praise God. science. Like, pray- yeah, it's literally praise science. That's funny. Like that's literally what it is, and it's like it's really, it's really, really cool, actually. Um, I'm trying to think. I know that the the um the Fantastic Four right now are really popular again. That's like good. Their stuff has Hopefully. been really good. I looked up who is writing Iron Man twenty twenty, and it totally makes sense as to why you don't like it. Who is it? It's Dan Slott. Okay, I don't know who that is. He wrote the uh, before Nick Spencer, so the guy who's currently writing Spider Man. He was the guy who wrote Spider Man from like two thousand nine forward. Okay, and he was not very well received for a lot uh, of it. Yeah, uh, he's not a bad writer, but he has definitely become like Brian Michael <laughs> Bendis in that <laughs> he tries to do a whole lot and. <laughs> he's not one of those writers necessarily that that's able to he has a grand plan but then it it's not like executed well right so um there are there are certain writers can that can do that really well that that you know can like lay breadcrumbs throughout a 50 issue storyline and then everything comes together while also writing other story like other books that all converge into one thing uh jonathan hickman is probably the one person who's like better than anybody in the entire world at doing that he's currently writing the x-men which is another thing that i uh i would recommend that's very good um it it definitely changes how the x-men work but dan slot not that kind of guy he's tried it before he tried it on spider-man he's the reason that spider-man events have existed the way that they have in the past five to ten years he made spider verse it was bad he made spider geddon it was bad bad. (laughs) it was spider geddon was worse actually and then then they started doing venom events and it's like hey those were actually kind of good or at least one of them so far maximum carnage was really good or okay was it maximum carnage unleashed right uh i don't remember absolute carnage oh absolute yeah, yeah, yeah. carnage okay. is what it's called okay yeah that uh and that is all by the venom writer because holy crap that book is so good mm-hmm. and it actually ties into thor which is another reason that you should read that okay uh i'm just i'm looking at right now when did because i'm wondering when did spencer take over uh this current run okay so once uh the the last story that dan slot did was issue 801 i believe uh okay. which was the end of the red goblin arc and then they started over with issue one yeah and oh, that is inspired. has yeah, all been spencer. nick spencer okay yep okay so uh venom ties directly into thor or at least uh, an an older Thor series, the the Mighty Thor that I mm-hmm. I had recommended you read yeah. with the really pretty artwork. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, did you read any of that? No, I have not. Okay, so there there is a a villain, um, and he's called Gore the God Butcher, and he's probably going to be become one of your favorite villains. He's so good. Uh, his whole thing is he goes around to different planets killing all of their gods oh yeah i know who gore is yeah okay yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah. um so the sword that he carries is a symbiote yeah 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 yeah. so that's 
Uh, but it's like a piece of the original symbiote. So it's it's pretty interesting. You should definitely read the Gore of the God Butcher stuff. It's very good. And you should uh, definitely read Venom because it ties into into, into Thor. It's, it's really cool. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I forgot Gore has been mentioned quite a bit. Yeah. And was the whole reason that he couldn't use the hammer anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Gore was right. Gore was right. Gore Let's be was honest. Right. He absolutely was right. Hundred percent. He was totally right. After reading, after reading so much Thor, now I can a hundred percent agree. Gore was so right. Thor, I'm just like all right. Thor has been written so well for the past like ten years. It's yeah. It's really unfortunate that there's a lot of people that pass on it. Because I I know that they're like I've tried to recommend Thor to people and they're just like nah. Thor's just like. You know, it's just like it's like Chris Hemsworth. He's just a jokey, funny dude. It's like it really depends on the story. Yeah, it really, like, really does depend on the story. Like, uh, I I started reading Thor through Mighty Thor, uh, which was Jane Foster. Jane Foster Thor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jane Foster Thor. And then when it went back to, uh, when it went back to original Thor, um, I was yeah, Odinson. Uh, I was a little hesitant because I was just like, because I really like Jane Foster as Thor. Yeah. Um, but when it went back to Odinson, I was like, okay, let's see where this goes. And I was like, I was very, very impressed by it, actually. Like, I definitely mm. loved uh, kind of seeing the development of Thor as a character, of not just kind of like, of like, ah, like thunder and lightning and smash, 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 where it's like, oh, no, there's actual development of like, you know, he... He doesn't have the original Mjolnir anymore, so mm-hmm. to offset that, he's just forging hammers out the wazoo. But none of them are are the same. Like they're all they're all just imitations. And even hmm. like he's got like the tiny chunk of Uru of the original Mjolnir, and like every time he like holds it in his hand, he can feel like the weight of it. Of like he, if this was an actual hammer, he would not be able to lift it still. Wow! Uh, and it shows that like. Um, it shows like kind of that journey of trying to become worthy again and and being a better a better thor that would that he thinks is worthy and that that you know the hammer also thinks is worthy yeah huh cool yeah it is is really is very very well done and i was like oh this is like actually really really awesome that being said um spoiler alert i guess cuz i mean you've read you read you're reading current thor right uh, I I'm going to. Okay, we should read current Thor. Um, actually, I guess you should. Uh, I should say you should read War of the War of the Realms because War of the Realms ties. It's literally yeah. the prequel to the new Thor. Oh, I um, know. Which is it's, it, awkward. That's a hefty. Yeah, there's a lot. Like, there's a lot, and there's a lot to go into War of the Realms. Like, there's a lot of stuff to process. And like, I want to tell you stuff, but I don't want to like spoil it for you unless you can. Ah, it's, it's fine. Okay. Go ahead. Um. Okay. Hold on. I gotta think about it. Was he? Dying? He's still missing his arm, oh, right? He's still missing his arm. But so what happens is, uh, uh, he takes the um, what's what's the the guardian thing? The um, it was in the first Thor movie. Um, what's it called? It's like a weapon of some sort. The I'm pretty sure it's just called the Guardian, but you know what I'm talking about, right? The the big old yeah, the dude the, with the laser eyes. Yeah, with the laser eyes. It's yeah. like it's like a giant like it's kind of like Colossus, but not nearly as like smooth. But it's like a giant yeah, yeah. like hulking metal thing and shoots lasers from its face. Yep. Yeah. So he takes uh, I guess apparently either one of the arms is detachable or they just have it in like the Avengers Tower, apparently. But he takes that okay. and he just that's his arm now. He just, he slots, he, like, literally, like, uh, like, Thor, I think, like, like, if I remember correctly, War of the Realms, like, Thor, um, kind of did his own stuff, he didn't really do to, oh, no, what happened was he, Thor literally stuck himself with, I believe he stuck himself to the world tree of Yggdrasil, um, Ah. because of, I guess there was, I guess, I can't, I can't remember off the top of my head. But it's like, um, 
I guess there was like a myth of if you attach yourself to the to Yggdrasil and then light it on fire, it will reveal like all the secrets of the universe to you. Uh, mm. And so Thor does this. He attaches himself to Yggdrasil with his axe and he lights the tree on fire to try and figure out how to win the War of the Realms. Um, and so uh, in doing, and so like when he comes back, he one is missing an eye. <laughs> classic uh because it burned out of his skull i think mm-hmm. and then uh he like goes to avengers tower and they're like where's thor and he's like i'm right here and he takes the guardian's arm and he just slots it into where his arm would be and he's like this is my new arm now this is this is how we rolling um huh. and through a turn of through a bunch of turn events because uh eventually what happens is oh, what's his name the dark elf dude the main villain malekith Malekith, that's his name. Um, it was actually really interesting because he's, like, fighting in Midgar in the city streets and, like, Venom tries to, like, stop him. And Malekith, like, literally stabs Venom and he realizes that Venom is a symbiote. And so he he uses his sword and he sucks out the symbiote out of Venom and his sword becomes uh, a symbiote sword, uh, similar to, like, Gore's. Uh, and he goes on this terror spree and... Eventually, he abducts um, Odin and what's Odin's wife's name? Freya. Freya, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's thought so. Uh, Freya, and there's this whole there's this whole exchange. I'm basically just giving you the TLDR. Uh, there's this whole exchange and stuff like that of Malekith wants to fight Thor like one on one and to try and save uh, Thor's parents. Uh, mm-hmm. And eventually, Thor like comes down and he literally reforges Mjolnir, like, with uh, the wood of, wood of Yggdrasil and, like, a bunch of, like, Uru and stuff like that. He reforges uh, Mjolnir again and becomes... <laughs> and that's basically how he becomes Thor again. Um, but, yeah, but so that all happens, and then um, Odin, I believe, dies. I believe he gets killed, actually, because he uses himself to sacrifice... He sacrifices himself to one buy time for Thor to forge the hammer uh and then two I think he's also protecting Freya uh and then so war the, then so then war of the realms ends and Thor becomes uh the new all father at that point yeah 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 um huh. but, yeah but so yeah war of the realms is really really good i would honestly just recommend reading like the main arc stuff um don't unless read the, you're the side stories yeah i wouldn't read the side stories just because there's a lot <laughs> there's so many um, i need to read the venom stuff because i'm actually reading venom and that's where i stopped reading venom because i was like god i need to read yeah. all the war of the realms crap yeah the venom stuff is interesting um i think uh i think there's like a small tie-in with mighty thor like jane foster's thor i think mm-hmm. there's a little tie-in there i don't quite remember honestly um but yeah i i I honestly primarily just read like the war of the realms like actual arc stuff um yeah uh that was primarily what i read and it was it's 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 really really good but yeah there's a lot to like digest because there's it it does again it does like it tries to do so many things or like at least the first couple issues it tries to set up so many different points and then like once it once it establishes like like all like the things of like you know, like, the roadmap, then it starts hitting, like, one thing at a time, like, like, jumping from thing to thing to thing, and it's like, okay, mm-hmm. I get where you are, but, like, the first issue is, the first couple issues are, like, kind of rough, because it's like, oh, god, there's so much, like, it's trying to do so much, but it's just trying to <laughs> lay the groundwork first, and then it's like, okay, once we get this out of the way, then we can dive into only just regular stuff, and, yeah. It's also really cool, because, uh, there's a moment where, um, like, they're fighting in Midgar, and the Valkyries come in to, to help them. Um, mm. But they they obviously know... Uh, I think something... I forget what happens. But, like, a, they're trying to... Oh, they're trying to, like... I think they're trying to evacuate people. And uh, they're trying to evacuate, and they're, like, trying to retreat. Because, like, we don't... We can't win. There There's too many forces. And literally, they had, like, Doctor Strange and a couple other casters, like, summon a spell to, like, get them out of there. And, like, the moment they finish casting the spell, that's when the Valkyries come in to help. 
And so, like, they awkwardly just, like, abandon the Valkyries, and that's how all the Valkyries get killed. Because oh they just, God. they get, they come in, and it's just, like, it's too late. They can't stop the spell, and they, they leave. And it's, it's really, actually really sad, because it's, like, um, uh, because uh, it centers around Jane Foster and, like, her role in the War of the Realms. And it's, like, uh-huh. oh, that sucks. <laughs> that fucking blows. Rip. So, yeah, it's like it's a big oof moment of like, oh, that's ooh, ouch, <laughs> <laughs> ouch. <laughs> but yeah, um, but yeah. So new Thor, current Thor is is current Thor is fucking dope. It's <laughs> so yeah. good, so so good. Um, in which you you said you have not read it yet. I haven't read it, but I I know a lot about like some of the references that they've made. Yeah, so basically it's yeah, Thor is the all father now. Um Yep. And which is a really good natural progression. Yeah, it's a really yeah, it's a good natural progression and so it's it's his kind of journey of becoming all father and it's like to him it feels like he is he's kind of going through like a midlife crisis at this point mm-hmm. now where it's like he's becoming all father but it's awkward because everyone's like, yeah, you become all father. You're not like you're, you're retiring from your hero days. Like you can just sit back and relax. And Thor's like, but, but I don't want to do that though. I, I want to still be Thor though. <laughs> um, and it actually it, like it foreshadows that like every time he picks up the hammer, cause he's, he's, he's slowly spiraling back down into, he feels like he's not worthy anymore because mm-hmm. of he has to be the odd father and he has to do all this stuff. Like, and he, he just can't be Thor anymore. So it's like, it foreshadows that like, every time he tries, he picks up the hammer, it gets a little bit heavier each time he picks it up. Yeah. And it's like, in, in the back of my mind, he's like, there's going to be a point where I'm not going to be able to pick this hammer up anymore. Um, and in like, I think it's like the second or third issue, he fights Beta Ray Bill because yeah, yeah. of, he becomes the new Herald of Galactus because there's this, uh, there's this just, this cosmic, I think they call it the Black Winter, I think is what they call it. Uh-huh. Uh, and it's basically just this, this cosmic winter that is slowly encroaching upon their galaxy. And it, it literally is like, the way they, they show it is uh, they reference like the DC universe. And they yep. show just, uh, it's like black snow that falls from the sky. But if it touches you, you literally just like dissolve and like poop out of existence. And so it shows like... Uh, it like references like there are many you know the world has many gods there's in one specific universe there's a god of I think they specifically say there's a god of strength a god of the shadows a god of speed uh, a god of emerald light and a god of the sun uh, uh, and the oceans what the oceans yeah yeah, talked about. And, yeah and the god of the oceans and it's it's they, they show like these different panels of like you see, like, all these different arcs of, you know, obviously it's like you look at them like, oh, I know what those mean. But you see the, the like, the, just this blackness that just slowly swallows up, like, the city of Metropolis. And it, it just, like, blinks out of existence. And, like, that's, like, the scale that it, they kind of show of, like, no, this thing is, like, it literally devours universes. <laughs> it literally kills them. Um, and so I guess the only thing that can stop them from according to the Silver Surfer, the prophecy has foretold that Galactus has to eat. There are like five specific planets that Galactus has to devour, and then only then will he be able to fight the like the cosmic winter that's coming. Um, and so Thor takes it upon himself to be the herald uh, and try to like go and do this. And obviously, people don't like it when you no. become the herald of Galactus. People don't like that. Apparently, it's also a moment where. Galactus, like, gives Thor his, like, herald powers. It's actually really funny because of Galactus has this idea of, like, you are my herald, like, you serve me. And Thor goes, ha, you, th- that's cute that you think that. And he, like, literally, like, he's able to, like, take Galactus's powers. And, like, because, like, and there's a point where, like, Thor's like, I'm not actually the herald of Galactus. I don't serve Galactus. And Galactus, like, he takes the powers away and goes, yes, yes you do. And Thor just goes, no, give me those back. And he takes <laughs> no, the Herald no, no. powers back again. And he's like, I don't do this for you. Like, stop that. And it's like, it's such a badass mode of like, hey, he's still got it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so 
eventually he fights Beta Ray Bill, and uh, it gets actually really heated because of uh, Thor actually ends up, uh, I think, uh, Sif, who is the new uh, Watcher, uh, not mm-hmm. Watcher, but um, what was Heimdall's title? He, uh, Sif controls the Bifrost, whatever. Yeah. Sif controls the Bifrost. And it's cause, so she's watching this fight take place. And like Thor goes to like a, like basically kill Bill. And he throws the hammer. And Sif takes the Bifrost. And he tele and she t- pinports targets the hammer and teleports it away from him. And wow. Thor just goes, Thor just goes, Sif, where's my hammer? <laughs> and Sif just goes, <laughs> wouldn't, my wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> and she's like, you should, you should stop fighting now. And like, uh, and like. Uh, Bill's like, and like, so they kind of like, it's they kind of like go just do that, this back and forth, and Thor's just like, well, if Sif's not gonna help me, and Bill's not gonna help me, he and is like, then fine, I'll just use someone else's hammer to kill Bill instead, and so he takes Beta Ray Bill's hammer and actually like smashes it to the ground and breaks it, uh, to revoke it's his. So his heartbreaking. Power. It's super heartbreaking. It's like it's so sad. It's so fucking depressing. Um. But yeah, that's that's where Thor is going right now, and it's it's super super cool. Like it's super super cool. My chat just goes kill Bill Sirens activate. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, new Thor is awesome. It's so so good. I ten out of ten do recommend. Yeah, I I definitely need to get get through to it. It's it's on my list for sure. Yeah. Um. I need to so I need to read X Men, Fantastic Four, and Ven and catch up on Venom and Hulk, mm. and then Thor for sure. Yeah, I um DC has been kind of meh lately. Yeah, I like I keep trying to like read DC comics and I'm just like they just bore me so much. Like I was uh, like I was a huge fan Detective of Batgirl comics for a good. while. Yeah, yeah, I might like so good. the problem I had with Detective Comics and like group comics the problem i have with that is that sometimes things get really disjointed of like yeah. like stuff happens and then like you're like we're like midway through uh this happened with um i think i was reading new 52 detective comics i think is what i was reading at the time uh-huh. um but this happened with that where it's like something was happening uh and i it was i forget what it was leading up to but like something happened and, like, literally the issue ended on, like, a cliffhanger where it's, like, they're fighting, uh, the Bat family is, like, fighting these, like, mutated monsters. Oh, and... yeah, Night of the Monster Men. That one was really bad. Yeah, but, like, so, like, there, it, like, it ends on this cliffhanger of, like, oh, this monster's, like, atta- like about to attack the Bat family. Like, oh, crazy. And then literally the next issue, it's, like, three months later, and, like, uh-huh. that issue is, like, completely resolved. And I'm, like... yeah. Huh? Night of the Monster Men was a four issue tiny little series had next to nothing to do with the overarching story. Yeah, it was only referenced one time after that of the oh, yeah, you remember when uh, Hugo Strange took over yeah. or tried to destroy Gotham with stuff with yeah. uh, with and Venom. Was, and it's like, I was just no. like, so yeah, I was just like, so fucking lost because I was when like, did that when yeah, like when did when did this happen? And it was like. It turns out, like, you have to go read, you know, Batwoman and Batman and all the other smaller, like, individual comics. And I'm like, yep. I don't want to fucking do that. Nope. <laughs> like, that's, what was the point of this? Uh, so, the, so you said that you don't like to read out of canon, out of continuity stuff. Yes. And that's actually where I think that DC does their best work. Generally. Mm-hmm. Uh because i i so i pulled up a list of all of um dc rebirths lines and a lot of them have been canceled sadly <laughs> oh uh, a lot of them only got to like issue 50 or most of them when they were canceled they got to issue 50 blue beetle lasted 18 issues oh. i think uh cyborg lasted <clears throat> 23 certain ones are have only lasted x amount of time and it's really sad yeah um but 
Detective Comics was good throughout the whole thing. Uh, Batman has started to be good once uh, Tom King got off the book. Batwoman was really good, but she got canceled. The Flash has been pretty good. Uh, Teen Titans... No, not Teen Titans. Titans was really good. Teen Titans has been nothing but garbage. (laughs) Uh, Red Hood and the Outlaws is awesome. I would definitely recommend reading it because it's... It's one of the it's like Batwoman. He's a fringe bat character. So you get a bunch of bat stuff, but you don't have to be reading Batman because Batman can get really boring when he's not doing something interesting. Yeah, which is most of what Batman Uh, has been doing for the past 20 years. Esprit says that Dark Knight's metal uh, is pretty good. And the Batman who laughs one shot was really, really good in her opinion. Yeah, I I have them on my shelf. I, I read um the the dark knights prologue thing so i actually need to sit down and read um metal because death metal just started and it's really interesting from what i've heard did you say it was is it red hood and the outsiders or is it batman and the outsiders the red hood and the outlaws red hood and the outlaws okay yeah Uh, so what is uh dark knights death metal is the follow-up to dark knights metal and uh it so they're i think they're getting into rebooting the universe again because i don't know if you know who wally west is yes okay he kid has flash. the powers no he's flash well he's flash but he used to be kid flash he was kid flash in the 80s he's flash yeah right okay Wait, so he so hold on and i know there are a lot of flashes and I'm uh, Wally West was the Flash longer than Barry Allen. Okay. Okay, so I believe Wally. Hold on, I need to know. He, I just need to. He I didn't need to, exist in the New Fifty Two. I just need to. I just need to. I need a visual representation of who. Okay, I know. Yeah, I know who Wally West is. Okay, okay so did you watch Justice League growing up, like yes. at all? That yes. was Wally. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because I'm, at that I'm point right. in time, he, uh, yeah, Wally West is. So I, he's the I know the name Wally West because I know he's Flash, but in, uh, um, I think it's, yeah, in Young Justice. Young Justice, he is Kid he Flash. He is, uh. And then he dies. And then he dies, yeah. But he is Which Kid Flash in Young Justice. fucking cry. Yeah, he's really good. Um, so. But okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, okay, he, I have a face now, I got it, I got okay, it. Okay, yeah. So Wally West is basically the key to making the universe how it should be because he has the powers of Dr. Manhattan. Interesting. They gave but, Wally West the powers of Dr. Manhattan. Okay. Okay. Interesting. I'm okay. I, because, you have so, my attention. <laughs> you have my attention now just because I, I'm just set. I'm like hesitant because of the fact that the whole point of rebirth was that like they were like slowly tying in Watchmen stuff? Yes, and it didn't uh, go well. Yeah, and then it just didn't happen, and I was like, yeah. well, "That's disappointing." Um, it didn't go well, and the the uh, editor in chief of DC was, I think, silently fired. Um, but it was more like he resigned. But but it was like, right. "Hey, you are He's, taking this in a direction that nobody yeah. wants." Yeah. So. Um, in but I do death know metal, that uh, I do know that there was a like, so I'm okay. So I'm glad though that because like there was I know that the whole point of Rebirth was they were tying Watchmen stuff in, but then they were also tying in that Wally West uh, comes back. Like that was like yes. a huge point, especially for the Titans Rebirth. Was yeah, that Wally that's West why I loved. Back, and then he like I loved he, like, Titans. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, uh, and like, then I Wally left the, the Titans. Yeah, because I remember reading the first issue of Titans where like he goes to like talk to Nightwing, and it's mm-hmm. like, hey, Dude, like, so good. like Dick, hey, and like Dick's like, fucking Wally, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't until he touched him. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, because he didn't recognize him at first. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. Wally is not from the 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 from, New like, Fifty Two timeline. Yeah, like he doesn't exist. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what all of this is about is I I believe is is making everything the way that it should be, bringing the characters <laughs> that they should have because making, currently 
Fi- the, fixing the fuck up that was Rebirth. Yeah. <laughs> they, they brought back the 90s Superboy, and that made me so happy. The one with the freaking the, the leather jacket and the, the sunglasses and the pierced ears. He's oh back. God, yes. And it's actually really cool. Um, But, so, Batman and the Batman who laughs were fighting, and it destroyed the source wall. Like, there was a crack in the source wall, and now it it's it's shattered uh and that so the crack in the source wall is what um justice league is about the one that you're that you're looking into reading okay. so that's kind of what that one was about um and now death metal is the source wall doesn't exist okay and, or at least is is just like destroyed right mm-hmm. um and uh, I think that's where if they are going to be doing a crossover between Marvel and DC, which I'm not sure how that's going to work now after everything has gone the way it has, but they both seem to keep referencing each other with mm. uh, Thor did it and Justice League did it. And I think Immortal Hulk has done it is it seems like that's the, the way that they're trending. And since the source wall is the end of the DC universe, that is going to be like their entrance into Marvel or okay. vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. So I, really I'm looking at a, I'm looking at a preview of justice league and yeah, that is the current justice league is what I'm thinking about reading. Yep. Yeah. Really good. Okay. And, and the person who writes death metal or who is writing death metal and who wrote, uh, dark Knights metal, is Scott Snyder. He's the one who wrote Justice League. He's the one who wrote some of the the um the uh Batman that you read. He wrote all of the new 52 Batman and you read What did you read of the new 52 stuff? Cuz you didn't read The Court of Owls, which is the one that I was like, you really need to read this one. I did not read Court of Owls, which I probably should have because I'm pretty sure that ties into We Are Robin and I love We Are Robin. Uh I hate we- Really? I hated... Uh, I like Duke Thomas. I think he's really cool. I, I like, like the idea. Okay, I liked Duke Thomas, and then he became the signal, and then I hate Duke Thomas. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I like signal, Duke Thomas like, as a is... person. I don't like yeah. him as the signal. Oh, God, um, so bad. No. Uh, I, I liked the concept. Uh, yeah, it was I kind of idea. cringy, because it was like, we're... It was just a really bad Teen Titans yeah and and it was it was kind of a a slap in the face because i'm a huge robin fan and it was like just give me a robin book don't give me this i like that it was like it was like because i liked the fact that it was like we are robin was yes it was a shitty teen titans but it was i like the fact that it was a shitty version because they're just regular kids like they're just people and so yeah. like like I like the uh, the concept of that where it's like yes it is a shitty team titans but there's a reason why it's a shitty team titans. Yeah, but... Like I love the fact that there was cuz like um there was one issue which did you get through did you like finish it or did you stop? I got six issues in. Okay. It didn't I, last for very long anyway. Yeah, it didn't it last like very long. Issues. But I know that there was And then was I a... read the the Robin War arc which tied into it which was okay. like issue 13 or yeah, something. Yeah, cuz I know that there's a I, at some point, there's a there's like a uh, like the group goes to like disarm like a bomb and down uh-huh. the subways, and uh, one of the one of the robins he he basically is like in his he like he gets it into his head of like he like he's a robin he's got this he can do this and he, he does not have this and he tries to disarm the bomb and it blows up and it kills him and it's like that's like the moment of like they kind of come back to reality of like oh. We're not special. No. We're not trained in yeah. this. We are just people. And we're just basically playing pretend, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, and, like, so, like, that, that's why I liked it. was, like, yes, it was shitty, but there's a reason why it's shitty. <laughs> like, it's yeah. supposed to be shitty. And I'm like, okay, I can, I can get behind this. Uh, one other thing about death metal is... Uh, so all of the characters have uh, they're like darker versions of themselves. Uh this one is uh, seemingly more focused on Wonder Woman and she goes she upgrades from the Lasso of Truth to the Invisible Chainsaw of Truth. Good. Good. 
So, yeah. So if you yeah. want to see Wonder Woman being, with an invisible being, chainsaw. Being chainsawed will make you speak the truth real fast. Yeah. I feel like. <laughs> yeah. I feel like uh, that'll, that'll really be real conv- convincing. Mm-hmm. Um, so as far as New 52 stuff, <laughs> I've yeah. As far as New Fifty Two stuff, I've read. I've read. I basically read all the major Batman arcs except for Court of Owls. So I read. Uh, wow. Well, the okay, best one. <laughs> I didn't read the best one. I read all the other ones. I to, like, I, I did not like here. Year One. Year no Zero Year. I didn't like Zero Year because it overwrote Year One, and I, I think Year One is I, okay. Better. I didn't read Zero Year. I didn't read Zero Year. I think okay. Quarter of Hours and Zero. Okay, I have to now look up New Fifty Two Batman arc. I oh, I, I know what they all are. It's Court of Owls. Okay, did not read it. And then it's uh, Death of the Family. Read that one. And then it's Zero Year. Didn't read that one. And then it's. Uh, uh night of owls? end end game no 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 court of owls and night of owls are are one after another so okay. it's it's pretty much the same thing yeah. i read death of the family uh and then end game and then bloom i read bloom end game is end game is uh batman versus the joker Oh, okay. That's Again. when that's when they that's when they die, quote unquote. Right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I yes. read that one. Endgame is how I started reading Batman. Or they call it super heavy, but it's yeah. everybody just calls it the blue mark because that's uh, James Gordon. Gordon. Yeah. 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 And then Which, that's I liked super heavy. Yeah, I liked it was James okay. Gordon as Batman because we when we talked about this right. on the podcast beforehand, where I liked James Gordon because it was James Gordon. Just as Batman. Like, if you like yeah. James Gordon, then you would just... He's just him as Batman. It's just funny. Yeah, you'll like it. It's just fucking great. Yeah, I yeah I read that one. Um, and again, we talked about it on the podcast. Because there's one... There are, like, a couple moments where, in my head, I'm like, wait, James Gordon as Batman doesn't make any sense. But they do a really good job at, like, kind of explaining or, like, filling in those holes of, like... Like, uh-huh. there's a point where, like... Because we all know that James Gordon smokes. And yeah. it's like, there's a point where it's like, how are you holding up not smoking? And he's just like, his arm is just littered with nicotine just patches. Covered in just them. covered. And he's like, I'm managing. <laughs> <laughs> I got the jitters, man. Yeah. And it's like, there's like one point of like, that's, it's so good. And then there's another point where like, he is, uh, he's like in this villain. He's like in this hole and it's filled with like, essentially like each wall is basically like a toaster oven. And mm. he's got this whole monologue of like, don't think about how in the next 10 seconds you're going to be burnt to a crisp. Don't think about the fact that if you don't get out of here, the villain gets away. Don't think about the fact that you need to throw this batarang perfectly in between the, the uh, toaster wall and the circuitry to save yourself. And don't think about the 90, like 90% like ninety of the time that you were practicing this, you fucked up. <laughs> and he, he throws it. He's like, don't think about any of this stuff and just fucking do it. And then he, he gets himself out. And I'm like, it's just the perfect thought process of James Gordon. I'm like, good. Oh, yeah. You're doing good, kid. You, you got this. Yeah. But so, yeah, I read um, Super Heavy. Uh, and then I I stopped reading Rebirth because uh, I got bored of it. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was yeah. It was, just, it was just like, it was just so bad <laughs> like i can't i can't say anything else like just reading like the gotham man and gotham woman thing i was just like this is dumb. it's so bad it's like it was sad like it got really sad but it i was never like even got oh, so good dumb, though. though like yeah did you even read far enough into the wedding stuff no did you even get near that okay, no good. i wanted to bad. too because i've been reading catwoman and like catwoman is actually okay i don't mind catwoman catwoman was pretty good I'm not a huge fan of Catwoman. It's uh, it's weird. Catwoman's weird because it's like I I'm wanted, just not a fan of the character. I think, I think yeah. Well, it's like dumb. I think I like Catwoman just because of like one. Like I was really interested. It was like oh, Selena Kyle and Bruce Wayne are getting married. That's crazy. And then they didn't get married. And I'm like, that's bullshit. <laughs> that's just uh, dumb. And then I was like reading more Catwoman, and I'm like, 
okay, this is this is interesting. This is this is cool. This is cool. Okay, whatever, whatever, whatever. And then I think right now there's there. I think they're right now they're gonna put Catwoman back into Gotham because she like oh. goes she like goes away. She runs away because ba- it's basically like if I had to summarize Catwoman, it's like Selena Kyle gets cold feet about marrying Bruce Wayne. And so she goes on a journey to discover herself. <laughs> like she basically goes on a journey to like figure out who she is. And now she's figured it out. And now she's coming back to Gotham. I think hopefully fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Cause that was like, like I'm really hoping that she's going back to Gotham. Like she's like, she figures out who she is and like, Hey, I think I can do this now. And so we're going and I'm like, for the love of God, please go. <laughs> do this for us. Please do it. Please. I'm begging you. Uh, Super Sons is really good. You never read that. Okay. Uh, you probably don't know anything about that. Nope. It's uh, Damian Wayne and uh, what's his name? John Jonathan Kent. Okay. So Batman's son and superman's son right and it's really cool uh really well drawn uh 10 out of 10 would recommend okay yeah but yeah i so can I've, give you lists of stuff yeah, but this, I've read the sad part about it is of, it got canceled <laughs> <laughs> i've read yeah i've read most did. of the new 52 stuff for batman at least there are only like okay. a couple arcs that i'm missing yeah um well, that was Rebirth. Yeah, yeah. Super yeah, yeah. Rebirth, yeah. No, is it? No, it's not. Yeah. Oh, no, not Super no, Heavy, but... No, Super Heavy's not. Yeah. Rebirth starts with... Uh, I was talking about Super Sons. Talking about what? Uh, Super Sons. Oh. Yeah, no, yeah, okay. Yeah, I Oof. stopped reading. I stopped reading Batman Rebirth when yeah, with Night of the Monsters or whatever. Night of the Monster Men. Yeah, Night yeah. Of the that was a good place to stop. Yeah, because that was it smart. Just, yeah, because like it tied in there. I was like, oh, I'll read Detective Comics, and then Detective Comics didn't do anything, and I was mm-hmm. like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> damn it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, I've I've read a couple issues of Justice League, and I'm like, okay, I'll. I like this. This is fun. This seems cohesive enough that I I won't get lost. He's a very smart writer. Yeah. So, uh, you're you're in for an actually good story. Yeah. I haven't read it all myself. I bought it in a trade hardcover or not a trade in a hardcover, and mm-hmm. it's printed on because they they printed this after they fired a bunch of their collection staff uh you know the people who make the you know this is what's going to go in here and here's the layout you know all the yeah. people who make the the trade bindings right. and so they printed it on not glossy paper and that really bothers me interesting so most yeah. books are printed on newer glossy yeah. paper because it it doesn't take water damage nearly as bad yeah uh, right it like colors don't fade over time the pages yeah. don't yellow yeah the uh the if what if i know what you're talking about the pages are also like kind of thick so like they don't like wear and they, tear they, as bad. they are sometimes thicker okay. omnibuses actually tend to have thin paper but most trade paperbacks when they have the glossy paper has has thicker paper so it's yeah, yeah it is harder yeah, to it's, tear it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's durable, a much yeah. better substance it just feels nice like it feels like a nice book and they didn't do it with this one. And so as soon as I took it out of the box, I was weird. like, this is really light. That's fucking weird. And then I opened it up and I'm like, that's not good. <laughs> that's not right. I was like, why is this so light? <laughs> oh, I don't like this. <laughs> but yeah, aside from that, it's good. Would would recommend reading. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Nightwing's good too. Nightwing was good at the very start of Rebirth, and then it got really bad because mm. Nightwing got shot in the head. 
and oh forgot yeah who right. he was and there was like that whole thing with the yeah rick grayson right there was that whole thing and now it seems that. like he's coming back to being who he's supposed to be uh because their their whole reasoning behind this was because it like it was first it was the court of owls and they brainwashed him and then it was like no it was the joker the whole time oh because that makes sense oh god it doesn't it doesn't apparently it, it doesn't. does to somebody it, it, yep yep <laughs> cool okay All right. Uh, have you read more Rumble at all? No. Uh, God damn it. God damn I'm it. I'm getting. I'm, I'm <laughs> damn working on you. It. Uh, the art style, like I said, is is uh not as it much is, of an issue yeah. anymore. Uh, yeah. at, since I was able to take a uh, a break from the original one, so it's not as nearly as bad of a uh jarring experience for me. So yeah. I'm I'm I I do like it yeah. a lot. That's good. That's good. Mm-hmm. Let's see. I'm trying to look through all of my. Uh... I have a huge wish list of comics that I need to buy in actual physical form, and I'm really sad because a lot of them have gone. Uh, they're not available anymore. <laughs> oh, I haven't yeah. bought anything for a while because I was like, I'm gonna stay away from buying things. While the whole uh, while the world's currently pandemic situation <laughs> is going on, yeah, these this is gonna go on YouTube for for yeah. us. So I don't wanna, <laughs> I don't wanna shoot that in the foot. While the while the world's currently burning, we're just gonna yeah, just gonna take a backseat real quick. Yep, exactly. I'm looking well, that's... up a I'm looking up a list of like ongoing comics. And I'm just like, what am I reading right now? Uh, currently reading Deadpool. Deadpool is Deadpool is also kind of like I'm also getting bored with Deadpool. Really? Yeah, and it's it's primarily primarily because it's like so Deadpool rebooted itself to be after Secret Wars. Um, uh, or was it Secret Wars or um Secret Empire? Secret Empire. That's it. Deadpool uh-huh. rebooted itself after Secret Empire, where Wade basically wiped his memory again. So he like doesn't remember that he has a kid. He doesn't remember like uh there's just like a bunch of shit that he like he doesn't remember that he go he was married. He doesn't remember basically everything that happened in uh I think it's all new Deadpool or something like that. Mm-hmm. Basically everything that happened there, he doesn't remember. Like that that is all erased now oh good uh and he's just deadpool again like classic merc with the mouth deadpool um mm. and it was so he has okay. no was, character basically yeah like, he's he has just no wacky. driving force exactly yeah basically he That's like rough. yeah he and the what what the the arc that they're doing right now is that he monsters have invaded uh i think it's staten island it might be something else. Basically, it's a it's a suburb in New York. Sure. Um, yeah, like eh, you know, um, it's in there. But he, I guess the the king of the monsters dies, and Deadpool has now become the king of the monsters that inhabit this island now. Hmm. And that's basically just how that's just what's going on right now in Deadpool. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm just bored with it because I'm like, this doesn't go anywhere. There was a brief moment where, uh, uh, previously before this happened, previously, like he is like in a he's at like an amusement park, uh-huh. and he's like trying to kill this like mascot character, and he like bumps into this little girl, and like this little girl is like like helping him out. Um, uh, and at the end of the issue, it's like it's like. Um. Uh, what's your name? Like, hey, like, thanks for helping me out so much, kid. By the way, what's your name? And it's revealed that it's Deadpool's daughter. Uh, 
And she oh, goes, I can't remember what her name is, but it's like, yeah, my name is. I want to say it's like, what's Deadpool's daughter's name? I don't remember. Uh, Deadpool's daughter. Eleanor. Eleanor, yeah. And she's like, oh, my name is Eleanor. And he's like, all right, well, well take care, Eleanor. And like, he leaves, and it's like, and it's just like really sad of like, oh, Deadpool just doesn't remember her. That's cool, I guess. Thanks. I hate it. <laughs> Thanks. I'm sad now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like they like yeah, it's like they had like that. Mo- there was like a moment of like, oh, are you gonna go back in the no, no no, you're gonna just walk away from a good plot point. All right, no, that's fine. I'll just okay. But so yeah, it's like it's just wacky Deadpool. It's like okay, well, hmm. I'm bored now. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm bored as fuck now. Um, I need to, and then like. They're also doing, like, so, like, the the three major comics I'm reading right now are Ghost Spider, uh, which is Spider-Gwen, Miles Morales, Spider-Man, and Miss Marvel, uh, in which I need, it's awkward because they're doing, like, they're doing, like, the classic, like, uh, something a big, something, some big event happens in, like, one of the group comics, and it affects uh-huh. one of the, it affects Miss Marvel specifically, and so, yeah. like, there's this new law that's being enacted called Cradle, and it's basically uh, a law that prohibits uh, teen vigilantism. So, Spider Gwen, Miles Morales, Spider Man, it's basically illegal to be superheroes now. Oh and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's because, like, I guess Miss Marvel got hurt, and like something happened to her. But like, it's awkward because of I don't think the next Miss Marvel issue is going to touch on it. And if they are, that's not going to like, it's going to do like a real fast TLDR of like what happened. And I'm just going to be lost. Uh-huh. And I'm like, I really don't want to have to read. I think it's champions. I think is what it is. I'm like, I really don't want to have to read champions to get a context. Sure. But mm. we'll see where that takes us. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I don't like. Uh, Wait, there's a new a Runaway of series. Kid books. Yeah. Is it good? <laughs> uh-huh. Is it good? Because I wanted to read Runaways, but I just, I the art side was like kind of the biggest thing. Like, I just couldn't get into it. No. Uh, Wolverine. Current Wolverine. Is that did they bring back Logan? Do you love again? You have to read X Men to understand that. Fuck. Short answer: Yes. Long answer: No. Fuck. Logan is alive. Damn it! But he's a clone, uh, and we all know how clones work. Uh, Not well. So it has his his memories and his personality and but, his God. shitty humor. Uh, yeah, but his shitty curing was kind of endearing, though. His kind what? Of. His shitty and humor was kind of endearing, though. Kind eh. of. Kind of. Uh, eh. okay. Well, that's... Just that's read funny. Weapon X. That's all yeah. you have to do. Just read yeah. Weapon X. Weapon X is really good. Uh, I can give you a whole list of really good Wolverine stuff, because I've read all of that, and I've not read most, like, almost any X-Men. Yeah. I just read X Force, uh, Origins. What I want don't is, read Origins two. I want X twenty three back. That's what I want. I want. She still exists. She still exists. Yeah, but you don't see her anymore. You don't because she doesn't do anything. Do I shut up! You shut your dirty whore. I said mouth. I guess. I'm not <laughs> saying she's shut bad. up. <laughs> you shut up right now. She's a good character. How dare you? <laughs> uh, all right. Well. We've hit about two hours, so I guess yeah. we'll, we should call it there. And we'll, We're there. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to the C Plus podcast today. Um, we, I will, if you want to see, watch this again with both Hex and I's perspectives, uh, stick around, or not stick around. Uh, I'll try to put that up on uh, the YouTube, my YouTube channel uh, a little bit later this week. Take care of that. Um, but, yeah, that's going to be it for us tonight. 
uh, once again, thank you so much for watching. Um, and if you're just watching the stream, we will be diving into some more Borderlands 3 in just a little bit. So we will see you then. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.